Greetings, and it's the Bloody Mary Show. Hi, I'm Bloody Mary, broadcasting from New Orleans inside haunted sites in this series inside the old haunted homestead of voodoo queen Marie Laveau as we explore deeper into her life with channeling, with psychic mediumship, with ghost hunting devices, and so much more. And we want your participation in it too. So do try to, you know, follow along and send in your observations. You might see or hear more than we do. This particular session, we will do kind of a remote viewing, which you can do as distant psychic connection, same thing, to a special box. We'll also use a ghost box on the box. So this series is the box. And we're going to go inside as we're inside the house of Marie Laveau. Remember to stop in New Orleans at the Haunted Museum and see all these things direct and see me or tune in here always and tell your friends to subscribe to Bloody Mary New Orleans on YouTube and BloodyMaryNewOrleans.com will get you all our information on seances, mediumship, items to buy and tours to do. Thanks. Hello, we're sitting with Marie. We're sitting at the Marie LaVault and look what I've got. I'm going to undress it. box and all of its contents it was in a man's house in Georgia. He said it kept him up at night. He kept saying he wanted to go home, wanted to go home, wanted to go home. He called around, he tried to sell it, he tried to trade, he tried to figure out what to do and then he finally found me. I did my own spiritual provenance and took it home. Home to New Orleans. But now, I took it home, home, to here. This box belonged to Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau spent most of her life, Marie Laveau spent most of her life in this house. And these were her belongings. She used them in many ways. I was actually surprised when I saw what was in the box. This is one of the problems that many people have out there, and I'm not any different. Presentism. Try to judge things and choices that people made long ago with modern standards. That never works. Marie Laveau was a free woman of color. She was married to a white man, and she came from a very mixed family in a very mixed town. So uh, we should not judge just the fact that uh, she was a strong, hardworking, healing woman. And I guess one of the things that I thought was odd, which is very judgy on my part, is that it had a gun inside there. Women did carry guns, and women carry guns now. But this Derringer made in New Orleans by T.F. Guyon was the weapon of choice for women in the day. And this even has her name engraved on it, which I'll focus in on you. It says Marie Lovell, Marie Lovell. So it's a 38. It came with little pallets. It came with a gunpowder case somewhere in here. It came with that. Came with beads. There's a gunpowder flask, bullet pellet, and gunpowder to make your pellets. Now, I shot this off ceremonially and I sent a message on the way. I I don't want to hurt it, so I'm not going to shoot it all the time, but it definitely is made in New Orleans. I think 1838, I believe, was the date that is on here. The story goes is that Marie Laveau did some work for this man and he gave this to her as a favor. So spiritually, psychically, some people think that he might have had a bit of a a crush on her, but either way, I'm pretty sure he did work and she did work. And a lot of trade was going on in the day. So her gun surprised me, but she worked with a lot of angry people. 
she worked and helped a lot of women that maybe the men didn't want them to be helped. Of course, she would need a gun for her own protection. I guess if you're so mystical, maybe you don't, or that's the thought now, but not back in her day. She was born in 1801, died in 1881. I have her evil away cross. I've had to change the, the rattle over the years. But it's got this, as you can see, vampire. Human teeth belonging to some of the family of Laveau and gator teeth in gold. And that styling, dental gold, the way it's made, is dated to that time period as well. It's real interesting that I made myself a necklace with much bigger gator teeth, just like that, about 30 years ago, and have never having seen this. So that's kind of interesting, too. And there are no axes, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Evil Way Cross, I use this to banish off any negativity on people, and all she did was banish. She did spiritual healing and physical healing all over the place. And she would have to ward, you have to ward off the unclean energy that's on you or trying to attach to you if you want to bring in good blessings and heal it. Always purge first. Um, another way for her physical healing would have not just been her herbal knowledge and her spiritual knowledge, which she married all together. But I have two very important bezoars of hers, which I have used Bezoar. successfully to heal some people in the hospital. This one is for the tissue and soft tissue. These are, are stones that are in llamas, goats, cows, things like that. Even humans, even cats. They're like pearls in an oyster, but bigger. This one works incredibly. This one is more of a calcification version used for, in my opinion, for broken bones, sprains, things like that. It's a white bezoar. So these two, Marie Laveau used and I use bezoars. She also had a ceremonial knife. A ceremonial knife is a way to cut away problems, to cut sacred space. I use it to cut the winds when hurricanes come our way. Successfully, this is Marie Laveau's knife and I've used it quite a lot. You get extra power when you use your predecessor's um, items because it's everything that they used in ritual. So they're with you even more. So we have a knife. There is a sacred little dime here. You wore a dime. Everybody these days thinks they want to go buy that Mercury Dime. Okay, what about before that? Mercury Dimes weren't made long ago. This is a Seated Liberty Dime. And this particular one, this particular one was uh, minted in New Orleans. There's an O underneath when it's minted in New Orleans. And this one's very old. See, there's a little hole in it too. It's because you could wear it on a string around your ankle, around your neck for protection. Silvering protection. Or maybe she melted it down, those bullets for the werewolves. Who knows? Or the vampires. See, you think that vampires are a modern thing, but they're not. The way they're described is uh, they weren't anything like the suave, debonair, sexy ones that we see today. In the times of Marie Laveau and plagues of New Orleans, there were devouring entities that may have attacked you while you sleep, sucking you dry. There were many different kinds and they weren't pretty. And you would have people like Marie Laveau banishing them away from you, blessing your house. The Catholic priest would come bless your house too to protect you from all these suquets that would come to take your energy all the way. With the fears and no one knowing what was causing the plagues, vampires were on people's minds. So this is not unusual to have a little vampire icon cross. That was to send it back. So there's lots of goody things inside here, including a variety of amber necklace beads, but they unstrung. So they're all in pieces. So amber, amber was also in here. What else we got in here? We got, those are the main ingredients. I have a little bone. I have a piece of her kneeling bench. So when they tell that man they want to go home, want to go home, I, it took me quite a while, but I'm literally in her home. And let's see what that does, how that wakes up here. I usually have them under lock and key on display in my museum, but I took them away so that they could be home, home, at least overnight to see, to see what it wakes up. And I'm going to have a lot of people touch it. We've had psychics all over come and try to connect with this box and they feel a heartbeat. Uh, they feel that it's alive. So they feel the box items as a unit, as a collective unit, as well as the individual things. So I'm gonna put these all back in the box. I'm gonna leave them right here at the altar overnight. Hey, I'm gonna leave them right here at the altar overnight and I'm gonna stay with them. 
and I'm going to have some other people come and feel it after it's closed up and see what they have to say. I also wanted to see what you had to say, so I delayed a few extra seconds at the beginning so that you could connect. So we're going to try a hands-on section now. We want you to participate. Put it on pause and go get a piece of paper, or you can use your recorder, but I want you to try to connect. If you pause, you'll have more time to connect with what's in the box. Then resume and see what's actually there. Greetings, thank you for coming. Do you want to state your name, rank, and serial number? Linda Ruth Thomas. And are you a local? Yes. A local New Orleanian, and I suppose, I suppose you've heard of Marie Laveau in your life? Yes. Do you remember anything, the, or the number one thing you heard about her, or the first thing you heard about her growing up? No, just that she's <laughs> the most famous voodoo priestess of New Orleans. Did you ever go visit her at her tomb? Yes. You did. And what did you hear about the tomb that you should do or not do when you went there? There was something about turning around in three circles mm -hmm. or the guide told us what to do, but I can't remember exactly. What okay. So you went there with a tour, not yes, on your own as a tour. kid. Okay. And they always say something different, but you knew that she was still helping people. Yes. From the other side. Did you hear dark things about her or nice things about her? I heard nice things about her. Well, that is good, because that's what it should be. But some people and TV shows, as you know, embellish, to put it nicely. Um, anyway, so this is her old cottage, and I've been channeling information from her in the book that I am, book series that I am writing. And I've got adepts and psychics that come in, but I also question locals that just have, you know, I guess no ulterior motive on anything on what they would feel. So this is their old house, of which I have an altars and dolls and all sorts of things all over the place. So I just wanted you to see the place. And then I'm doing a testing. So if you want to help me take yes. that stuff off of this secret box. Am I taking this off here? Yes, you can give me that. I okay. need that, but I don't need any of the and other stuff. Can I put these on the floor? Just put, yeah, you could put it right on, the, on the, the chair. Yeah, the chair. Those and then take off I'm the. Take off this. Yes, that belonged to my great great grandmother. This shawl. Who oh. lived across the street from here? Oh. So the left side of the body is generally considered the receiving information. The right side is generally what you use to send information. So I am going to have you use your left hand, and after I open the way, I'm going to have you put your hand on the box, okay. and then it's what you feel or what you see. We want to turn off the beta brain waves that make us analyze, question, and judge everything. If something comes to you, a thought, a visual, or sound, or smell even, go with it. Let it flow. Because once the beta brain, which is also your ego, comes in and takes over, then it's trying to control the situation instead of letting it flow. So if you get pink elephants, say pink elephants, okay? Our ego is also, I don't want to say that. I'm going to sound stupid. You know, it's not all, I'm so great. So we just want you to be as raw and open. So I am going to say, open the gates, open the gates, leg bow, open the way, pop, ha. And open the spirit world. Would you care to put your left hand on the box? Mm -hmm. And just close your eyes and I'm going to kind of do a slight beat to help you get out of body. Anything? Nothing so far. Is there a sense of apprehension, a sense of calmness, a sense of fun? You know, like it doesn't have to be you're getting a yeah. person come talk to you. Like explore the emotions or the feelings around it. Right now I feel like I'm waiting, like I want something. You want something. I want something, yes. You personally. 
Me personally. <laughs> you, you want something from that box. Um, yeah. I want it to tell me something. Or... Oh, you are waiting and wanting it to tell you something, but don't try. Okay. Trying is how it doesn't work. You're supposed to let it flow and not try to control. Let's try this. Let's take a deep breath from the center of the earth through your feet all the way up to through your crown chakra to the top of the, you know, the celestial planes. Okay, let's one, two, three. And out. Now take a breath from east to west that meets in the solar plexus. And at that crossroads where those two junctures meet, put an X through it. So you reach to the points in between. Another breath. And out. Now I'm gonna... Okay, now try to connect again. Any different emotions, any ideas, smells? I'm very calm. There's something sort of fruity floral. Fruity floral. Trying to think of what's in there. Orange, butterfly. Don't stress yourself out with it. It's the con- it's the idea to just try to see what you get out of it. Orange is a, I mean, butterfly is a symbol of transformation. It's also very important to the loa loco, who is the one that gives you the asana as a priest or priestess. Um, you can let go whenever you want. You don't have to feel stressed about it. It's John that's going to have to feel stressed because I'm going to make him do it next. <laughs> you want to give it a try? I'll give it a try. Yeah. I'm very calm, but I didn't see much. It's okay. Not everybody gets visuals. Again, sometimes you get thoughts. Sometimes you get smells. I wasn't kidding about the smell. And you did say floral. And she does love flowers. But Say hello. Hello. And introduce yourself. John Latour. And John Latour, you are also a local. Born and raised. Born and raised. You've also known about Marie Laveau your whole life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you ever told scary things about her? No, absolutely not. Um, That all seemed to come later with TV and other things as opposed to... Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, like they got <laughs> evil cells, right? Whether she was... Did you think she was a sorceress or a healer? I was going to say more of a healer, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, and you can be both. You know, <laughs> but the sorceress would be usually people saying that in a negative connotation. Say, yeah. And it doesn't have to be negative sorceress, but that's the way people think that's of it. Yeah. yeah. So put your left hand on this box and I will just <laughs> breathe in and out. And let yourself loose and you can get an emotion, you can get a visual. Again, you can get a damn smell. I think I know what you're going to connect with. Go. I was going to say something serpentine-like. Okay. In the box, I actually felt like it rattled a little bit when you rang the bell, but that could just be me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, this whole place is very serpentine-like, so if you're pulling the energies from the underneath through, that would make total sense of everything, not just the box. Uh, but there is serpentine energy in there. And what else were you going to say? You said something else, and I missed it. I was saying the box... Oh, it rattled. The top, the top lid rattled a little bit. Mm-hmm. Something was knocking on it. Well, that's sort of, sort of part of the story. And anything else? There are many things in the box. It's not just one thing, so. I mean, this could be just from what y'all were suggesting earlier, but something of a flower as well, but... Like I said, that could be just from what y'all were describing. Right. 
an overall concept of what that box may be used for? Do you have any utilitarian concepts there? Not that I'm gathering, no. Mm -mm. You don't know what the box would be used for, okay. The box itself? Or well, what's in, it, yeah, what, <laughs> what's in the box? No. Maybe a carving tool. A carving tool, okay. I don't know, I'm always thinking like maybe a horn <clears throat> that's kind of similar to you know, how a snake would look. A horn? Like an animal horn. An animal horn with a snake? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they both have, you know, have long and twisty features. And yeah. Well, there, there is something that is not a horn that is snake-like that you were describing, but you're not coming up with what it is. But you're being really good, by the way. You got three out of five so far. That or a root? Oh, I wonder if there's, I'm sure there's probably a root in there, but I'm not offhand. Anything else? Last call? We'll open it up in a minute. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, you know, relent. <laughs> okay, oh, open the box. All right, let's see what's in it. Is there a latch or just... No, just pull it over. Oh, wow. Well, look, there's a cross, and look what's hanging from the cross. A rattlesnake. Which looks the way you were saying, the pieces well, of a horn, right? <clears throat> that you said the way it was... Well, the serpentine thing, when I felt that rattling on the top of the box, I didn't <laughs> think of a rattlesnake. Just didn't say it. See, we can no, learn to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but you were trying to like describe like a ram, and you were doing the little sections. Well, this is little. I was also going to say section. a red ball, but I kept focusing on that instead. Even that's a bezoar exactly. mm -hmm. that comes out of your gut. Um, there's some bullets, and here's your carving tool. Oh no, it's not. See if you can grab that. See if you can get that out of there. Smoother than me. Oh, there's yeah. a knife which you could carve candles as well as use ceremonially. Um, there might be some root-like stuff down. There's definitely some wood, and there's a bullet-making tool. And, of course, the gun. <laughs> there's the silver dime with a whole board in it. There's some amber. There aren't. There were. I think there might have been at one point a little packet, which I don't know what I did with it, and it had rose petals in it. I am going to have to replace those. So this will be rose petals from Marie Laveau's altar. Because she was, might be telling me she wants the roses back in if both of you are getting that. Though they're here at her altar. And there's a gun, which surprised me the most. So there's a gun, there's a bone, there's a rattlesnake, there's a cross, an evil away cross. There's some vampire teeth, you didn't get that. Uh, the bezoars, which are used for healings. And I added the rose petals, which would be the herbs and... This was Marie Laveau's box, belonged to her. If you pick up oh the gun, gosh. pick up the gun and look at the handle, her name is uh, carved You're me. very lightly on the side of it. Oh my gosh. And you'll see the top, not, I'm sorry, on that, on this part, whatever that's called, the butt. Wow. So it says. Marie on one side and Laveau on the other. That is so amazing. It's made by T.F. Guyon, the local Derringer manufacturer here in 1838. And you know what a lot of people have said over the years about this box, the first time around before I had it on display in the museum, is that they felt a heartbeat. So the box as a whole was alive, as well as the individual items. You see it's written... Marie and Laveau. Oh, that's so cool. It's that's very cool. light. It's so beautiful. No, I do see it. Yeah. And that was the manufacturer of fine goods in town and was the store that was here. Did you, did you ever hear of Dr. John? Oh, yeah. John Montague, John. not the music. Oh. Dr. John, the voodoo practitioner. No. no. Okay, which a lot of people had said was Marie Laveau's teacher, which he was not. I am a Dr. Jim fan. Dr. John came in town long after she was already voodoo queen. And when, but, you know, that time period, he was very young, coming off a boat from Cuba. I have a lot of people, and a lot of people talked about him in his day as being the voodoo king. I have a slightly different take on it than people who were trying to make a hero out of him, let's say. However, 
while I was, last night, while I was looking up to see something about the T.F. Guyon manufacturer of this Derringer, because it had been so long since I looked it up, I saw an auction online that was from the estate of John Montague, which was the name of Dr. John with another Derringer of the same time period, which I oh, was wow. thought was a sign, though I haven't figured out of what yet. So I made inquiries on the provenance to yeah. connect the two. So anyway, this is Marie Lebeau's box. Thank you for participating. Were you Thank surprised you, that you got a bunch of things? I was, and like I said, I was thinking Red Ball, but that was while she was... Actually... Well, that's why I, when I saw that you were probably connecting because you're in the room, and I know you got felt put on the spot. You might have felt more, but you just got to let yourself go because nobody, and if you're wrong, I could edit. <laughs> but no, you, you know, you got quite a lot of things right, and there used to be a little box that I put in here which was from Rose Petals from St. Louis One with some oil and a tiny chip off of her grave, you know, which would be considered a trace. And I had that in there, then I took it out to do something, and I don't know where the hell it went. But I, I replaced the roses, which are Marie Laveau's favorite, and I will find that box. <laughs> so there. Aww. Thank you for helping. Want to jump down a rabbit hole with me? Well, as I was looking up some information on the Derringer about the fancy goods store that T.F. Guyon owned, I saw a similar Derringer, same time period, that was from the collection of John Montague, who was also known as Dr. John. Well, I don't know if it's the same one, because there's several. You know, there's Dr. John the musician. We're not talking about him. We're talking about Dr. John, the historical doctor, voodoo doctor in New Orleans, who was either a teacher, a rival, or drummer, or none of the above for Marie Laveau, depending on where you research. Either way, he wants in on the act, and he jumped in, popping out of the rabbit hole for me to see. And I just thought I'd let you know we'll explore that in the future. Follow me now and listen in to the Ghost Box Session. Hi, we're going to do a Ghost Box Session with The Box. Things assist. Greetings. Do you have anything to say? Any information from the box? Hello, are you happy to be home? Do you have something to say? Marie, Marie Lobo, are you there? Do any of the spirits would like to say something? Please speak through this if you can. Are the spirits here happy? Who is there? Are you happy? Your temptation. Your temptation? Fortunately, I don't have a lot of temptations. Greetings. Bonjour. Any spirits have anything to say? Please. Can you say hello? Say hello. Marie, Catherine, and Catherine Pomay, do you have something you would like me to bring? Offerings. Gifts. Fe 
fish? I've got fish that I gave you the other day. It's right here. So that, are you acknowledging the fish? Thank you. You like the fish? What else would you like me to bring? Dolls? You've got dolls. Lots of dolls. Fish dolls. Anything else? What was that? Is there something else you would like me to bring an offering to make the spirits here calm, happy? Back. I hope there is nothing I have to fight about. I know you are keeping my enemies at bay. Do I have any enemies? Mamzelle, will you help me write the book? Edward. Do you have something to say about Dr. John? John Montague. Bye, John. Creepy? <laughs> spiritual. Creepy and spiritual. Do you have anything to say? Are there any warnings I should heed? I thank you for being my mentor, my spirit guide, my helper. I ask for your help so that you may be my muse to write what we need to say. Did you last call... Last call for a message. Thank you for watching over the city when you were alive and watching it still. Thank you. Mercy. Can you say farewell? Goodbye? We? Oui? Yes. <laughs> Final words? What was that? Aye, Bobo. Final words, please. <laughs> Say good night. Let's see if it helps if I open the box. Gave it some room. Now what you gotta say? Anything more? What is this box for? Yeah, so there you have it. That box is for ritual and for connection 
to Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau and her family. I'm glad that you've joined me here. I hope that you have tried to participate in the remote viewing aspect of Psychic Connection here, because you can do distance connection. And I also hope you got something out of the ghost box, if that is your preferred forte. There are many ways to connect with the other side, and we're trying all of them, as well as direct channel. And I hope to be writing more soon for you. Thanks for tuning in to The Bloody Mary Show and Afterlives.